There is first the perihelion precession, a small correction of the orbital motion of the planet Mercury, the planet closest to our sun. Then the light bending effect, which appears to shift the stars around a massive body like our sun away from it. And closely related, the Shapiro delay, which has the effect of delaying in time a signal when it passes close to a massive body like our sun. Further, the motion of the binary pulsar, which provides us with the first indirect but very good evidence of gravitational radiation. And finally, the gravitational redshift measured by NASA's Gravity Probe A mission, which makes clocks go faster when they move away from a massive body like the Earth. Troubled by the shortcomings of the few tests of general relativity, an extremely sensitive experiment was suggested by Leonard Schiff of Stanford University and independently also by George Pugh of the U.S. Defense Department with a freely spinning gyroscope in a polar orbit around the Earth. Here, the gyroscope is a small sphere surrounded by a satellite. This is a gravity probe B mission. And so one of the gyroscopes of the four gyroscopes in gravity probe B is, is freely falling about the Earth. And so we adjust the spacecraft so that it flies literally around the one gyroscope. Gravity probe B is an almost perfect space-time reference system where the, it is a pure physics experiment where the apparatus is under the experimenter's control. We're going to be measuring the geodetic effect, which measures the curvature of space-time by means of perfect, well, almost perfect gyroscopes moving around at the Earth. Due to this geodetic effect, the spin direction of the gyroscope would move slowly due to curved space-time by 6.6 arc seconds per year. More exciting, we're going to be measuring the frame-dragging effect. The frame-dragging is an extraordinary prediction that physicists Josef Linzer and Hans Thiering made just two years after Einstein's formulation of general relativity. Due to this prediction of Einstein's formulation, a massive body, when it rotates, should literally drag the curved space-time around with it. Therefore, the gyroscope spin direction should turn also, perpendicularly and much more slowly, by 42 thousandths of an arc second per year. For a black hole in comparison, frame dragging is enormous. Like the air in a whirling tornado, the whirling space around a black hole has an enormous destructive potential. It may in fact be responsible for the power generation in some of the most explosive objects that live in the universe, the quasars at the distant reaches of our universe. This form of warping has never ever been seen by humans with confidence or in detail. This is the dragging of space into motion by the movement of matter, such as the spin of the Earth. Gravity probe B will reveal that to us in detail. The goal of Gravity Pro B is to measure these motions with respect to the distant universe with an accuracy of better than one hundredths of a percent of the geodetic effect and better than one percent of the frame dragging. How exactly does Gravity Pro B work? The experiment is done inside an Earth orbiting satellite. It contains a small tracking telescope pointed to a guide star. A sun shield is mounted in front of the telescope's lens. Solar panels provide the power for the electrical components. The main element of the satellite is a vessel, the doer, that is filled with liquid helium. It cools the interior to a temperature of very near absolute zero and maintains this temperature for the life of the mission. Inside the doer, superconducting lead foils shield the scientific instruments from the Earth's magnetic field. Here is the heart of the satellite, the physical probe, which is kept at high vacuum for extreme stability. It consists of the tracking telescope, 
sighted on a guide star and bonded to a quartz block that houses gyroscopes. For checking purposes, four gyroscopes are used. All gyroscopes are set spinning with their spin axis directed along the telescope to the guide star, which provides the reference direction for the gravity probe measurements. This is where we assemble the probe, the heart of the experiment. Inside the probe are four gyroscopes. They are the devices that measure the relativistic effect we seek. They are the most spherical object ever machined by man and are made out of very homogeneous quartz and then coated with niobium. They are the most smooth object ever seen by man. They are smooth to several molecular layers. So almost perfectly round is the gyroscope that if magnified to the size of the Earth, its surface would still be extremely smooth, more than 3,000 times smoother than the Earth. Its highest mountains would measure no more than 8 feet or 2.4 meters. Cold and essentially free of all influences, except the relativistic ones, the gyroscopes spin in loneliest isolation. But if the gyroscopes are almost perfectly round and smooth and essentially free of all influences, how can then their spin axis be measured? And not only that, how can the predicted minute tilt be measured? The answer is through superconductivity. Each niobium-coated gyroscope is cooled to nearly absolute zero temperature and becomes superconductive. When it is set spinning, the positively charged atoms keep rotating but leave the extremely slippery electrons lagging behind. The net effect is an electrical current that generates a magnetic field with a magnetic polar axis. This axis is exactly aligned with the spin axis. To measure a change in a gyroscope spin direction or a tilt, the gyroscope is encircled with a loop connected to a magnetometer known as a squid or superconducting quantum interference device. As the gyroscope tilts, the magnetic polar axis tilts too and changes the magnetic field through the loop. So sensitive is a squid that a tilt by an angle of only 0.0001 arc second is detectable within a year. What is an angle of 0.0001 arc second? First picture angles of 45 degrees, 10 degrees and 1 degree and look at the diminishing space between the endpoints of the clothing lines that form the angle. To picture an angle of 0.0001 arc second, we have to go a long way to see the two lines opening at all. In fact, all the way from Paris to New York City. 0.0001 arc second is the angle of Lincoln's eye on a penny in New York City as seen from Paris. The hardest of